Hi, I'm at it again. There's me breadboard. You know what that means. It's experimentation time. Greetings, the Astro 30 here yet again with an experimentation video. Now I want to touch Darren Yates 1 watt champ amplifier that uh, I previously did in another video oh, a few years ago now. And it worked out reasonably well and the test results were good. I want to reduplicate it. I don't want to make a repeat video of the one I've already made. I just want to build it up and you know see what sort of results I get. Now, I'll pull a link in the description, and probably a card up here, uh, to the video about this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to breadboard this out again, and I'm going to run some tests on it. Um, I've got a 327 and a 337. Uh, they got overheated in the uh, last amplifier video I built out of them. The only thing is, I don't have a one microfarad capacitor, non-polarized. So I'm just going to use a 3.3 microfarad there because I've only got one 2.2 microfarad which is needed here. Now what I want to explain a little bit about this circuit is the biasing arrangement here. You'll notice there's a 1k resistor coming off of this 470 microfarad blocking capacitor off the output stage which is then going back to the base of the BC327. This is known as bootstrapping and it's a fairly bad implementation of bootstrapping. It just uses the output to control the biasing of these transistors to improve the gain of this output stage and somewhat its linearity. For all, all intents and purposes this 1k could just simply be connected to the ground point and this will be permanently biased on because when there's no load connected there is no output. So when you connect an oscilloscope on the output here where the speaker is without a dummy load you'll get no output because the impedance or input impedance of the scope is so high that the amplifier doesn't even know it's there so it will not produce an output so it will not work in open load but if this 1k was connected directly to the ground instead of here then yes we would have an output so if you connect this up to a scope without a load and you find it's no output with an input signal, that's why. It needs to be loaded. I don't know how if this is going to work into 4 ohms. Now I'm hoping this is going to produce in the order of 600 milliwatts. So that means I need a roughly a 4 volt peak to peak output. So anyway, without further ado, I'm going to build this up and I'm going to begin testing. See you in a bit. Okay, I got the thing built up on breadboard, as messy as that is. Um, however, I don't have one ohm resistors for those emitter degeneration resistors there on the output stage. So I'm using 10. You will have a little bit of reduction in voltage output, but I'm going to have to go out and get some one ohm resistors. I can only get them in uh, quarter watt carbon. I can't get them as the 1% metal film and J because the lowest is value is 10. Anyhow, before I put this on test equipment I am going to do a preliminary power up test, make sure nothing goes off with smoke or you know stuff like that. And I'm going to put it on a load because it will not work without a load as I already previously mentioned. And I'm just going to measure what the voltage is between the two emitter resistors, which is the output before the capacitor, we should have roughly half the supply voltage. All right, circuit is loaded. I'm just going to power it up and I'm going to confirm what the actual supply voltage coming in is first. So I'll just power this up carefully. Nothing went off with a pfft, so that's all right. So I'll just find out what my incoming voltage is. Hmm, 9.35 volt, not too bad. I want to find out what the output voltage before the capacitor is, which is the positive, not the negative. 
4.6, 4 4.7 odd volt roughly. That would be half of 9.3. Excellent, so it's passed the preliminary test. Nothing is getting hot, which is always a good thing. So now I'm going to throw it on a scope and uh, see what output I get. I'm just using an online tone generator for this, only because one of the DC jacks that I use for the uh, oscillator is in use, powering the circuit. And we indeed do have an output, 3.27, 3.3 roughly, peak to peak. However, that's before clipping. That's the maximum it goes. I know for a fact from that other video that I did a few years ago that I was getting at least four, four and a half out of it. Now I use originally I had a 33k resistor going between the base of the second transistor and the positive because I didn't have a 22k. I do now. So I use that potentiometer to set it roughly at 22k and that seemed to give me a little bit more output. Biasing of this transistor input stage is highly important. Speaking of, I'm actually using a BC546 and a 556 respectively. The circuit actually requires a 548 and 558 respectively. So anyway, I was sitting here for the last two hours trying to figure out why I was only getting 2.5 volt out peak to peak. Now I've got 3.2. I had inadvertently connected this diode between the two bases and this 100 ohm was actually going in series with the collector of the second transistor and the base of the third, which is not right. As soon as I corrected that around, I got at least another volt out of it, which was yay. So now if I play with the volume on the generator, we can see that it's not symmetrically clipping. It's actually asymmetrically clipping, which could be an indication that that diode is not sufficient enough bias it's like we're losing the top transistor first however i'm going to stick that 22k in place of that variable resistor okay the 22k is now in place of that variable resistor the variable resistor is still on the board but it's not in use now so i'll hook the power back up still got a signal and i bet anything that it's still going to clip yeah maxing out at 3.4 volt. Next thing to try is the correct transistors and see if that makes a difference. Don't know if it will, they're electrically the same apart from voltage handling. All right, that's the two transistors changed. The propensity for these resistors to short against each other and other things is pretty high. Let's power it back up. At least we still have a signal. Okay. Yeah, it's not making it go any higher. The transistors I had in there were perfectly fine. So yeah, where do we go now? So anyway, what's that? At uh, 2.5 volt peak to peak, that was roughly 180 milliwatts. So we're now at 3.2 divided by itself, 1.6 multiplied by itself, mm, divided by my load. 320 milliwatts. Well, that's the most I can get out of it, which is a shame. But what I want to find out is how much am I putting in. So I'll disconnect the scope from the output. Uh, helps if I actually don't disconnect the wrong thing. I've disconnected the wrong lead. That's why I was getting no signal. That's a bit better. Okay, I'm putting about 470 millivolt in. That took longer than necessary. So, okay, I know at 470 millivolt in I'm getting 3.3 out peak to peak. So we need to know how much the gain is. So that's 3. Point, what did I say it was? 3.3 roughly? Yeah, I'm going to go with that. Divided by 0.470. There's a gain roughly of 7. Isn't that special? All right, got it hooked up to a speaker now, and I've also got a pot at the input as a volume control so I can control it. And I'll shut that tone generator off because it's annoying. And I'll play a piece of actual audio. It's hardly any noise coming out the speaker, so that's pretty good.
Sounds like all the highs are there, so the frequency response isn't that bad. There's a lacking in lower in there. Don't know if you guys can hear it over that buzz, but there is a low level oscillation there somewhere. And that's with no input connected and that volume control all the way up. Let me try disconnecting it. Oh, that's more pronounced now with it disconnected. Listen to that. Kind of reminds me of one of those ultra sounds when you're listening to a baby's heartbeat. Not that it would be beating that fast, but... I think it's the switch mode power supply doing that. Good morning. It's way too early o'clock in the morning. I was doing some thinking about this last night, whilst I was just getting ready to go to sleep. I'm just wondering if... These two BC327 and BC337 transistors have um, been damaged somehow so that their electrical characteristics have changed. Because when I built the other amplifier I had them connected back to front with each other and they got red hot to the point where smoke was coming off of them. And transistors do not, especially the TO92s, do not like getting that hot. I mean, it's a long shot, but it's worth a try. So you may be saying to yourself, but Astro, the circuit is still working. Yes, but it's not working as well as I like. Now, I know the supply voltage is around 9 volt. The halfway point is 4.5, roughly. And we're only swinging to 1.75 volt of the positive and negative rail respectively. We're losing at least two and a half volts. I mean, I know we're not going to get rail to rail with this, that's obvious, but I have tested this in the past and I'm pretty sure it was on nine volt and I was getting at least four and a bit out, peak to peak. So it is perfectly possible. However, so that's why I'm thinking to myself, well, are these two transistors here damaged by heat in some way that it's changed the HFE, uh, some electrical characteristic of the transistor, the internal planner of the transistor, the die, etc. To the point where it, it still operates but it's not operating correctly like it might have a internal high resistance now. It's, you know, just my thought process. I mean, without a proper transistor tester that can actually tell you all those characteristics, like the HFE and stuff, I'm kind of shooting fish in a barrel here. But the only way to test it is to buy two new transistors, pop them in, and see if we get better results. Okay, I've been out to JCAR, and a short time later I've got some replacement uh, BC327337 resistors, resistors, transistors. Speaking of resistors, I've now got myself some 1 ohm resistors the 0.25 watt or quarter watt carbon based ones can't get them in metal film which is thoroughly annoying so it's not going to make that much of a big difference to it but I am going to change those 10 ohms out for the 1 ohms as the circuit originally was designed for 
being quarter watt it means it's going to handle a little less power but I don't see that as a problem and I'm also going to swap out those transistors and we'll try testing again okay the resistors and the transistors have been changed out I have made sure that there is nothing shorting together which has the propensity to really do that very easily got the online tone generator ready to go and playing signal got the oscilloscope connected across the dummy line so now I'm just going to get the camera set up in a much more low position to see the scope screen now it's like you're crawling around on the floor now I'm not guaranteed to get better results but it's worth a try I'm going to power the circuit up now we have an output still at 3.27 volt out Aha! Uh -huh. Would you look at that? I can actually increase the signal further. I'm maxed out on the, the control there. Oh, I can go a hell of a lot more higher. Jesus Christ, we're looking at about 5 volt peak to peak, 6 volt peak to peak. Look at that. That is almost perfectly clean. I'll just drop it till the clipping disappears. Because we are starting. Well, we're not actually clipping yet. Right, we're clipping there. And we're clipping symmetrically now, which is also interesting. I'll just back it off. I'm going to say the maximum output is 6 volt peak to peak. From a little circuit like that, that is amazing. And those transistors are slightly warm, but they're not getting hot. Oh, wow. Now, replacing those 10 ohm resistors with the 1 ohms, would that have made any difference to our current output signal? Maybe a little, um, but not by much. When I tested it before using 10 ohms, I was getting 4.5 volt, 4.6 volt roughly peak to peak before clipping with 10 ohm resistors. 1 ohms, I'm getting 6 now. So what have we got? We've got 6 volt peak to peak. Well, I know what the half of that is. That's 3 volt. Uh, multiplied by itself is 9. Divided by the load, easily 1.125 watt into 8 ohms. That is is much much better so that other circuit i built the 300 milliwatt amp um it'd be probably more closer to a watt because i was right those transistors are overheating them. them so word to the wise be careful of which transistor you put in what position and which polarity of transistor you put in what position because if you transpose the polarities of transistors it's not going to make them happy. I might actually blow them up in another video. If you want to see that, let me know in the comments and I'll build up that uh, original amplifier, that 300 milliwatt, which is probably now a watt, back on breadboard here and I will put the transistors the incorrect way around, power it up until they smoke to shit and yeah, let me know. I love it when I'm right. So that means all the tests I did on that other little 300 milliwatt amplifier are null and void now because those transistors were damaged from the beginning. But I'm going to set my voltage output roughly to 3 volt, and I'm just going to verify my uh, frequency response. Okay, without making this too long and boring, I'm going to set my voltage roughly to 2.98, 3 volt for all intents and purposes, peak to peak. I'm going to halve the frequency. That's 500 hertz. I've only lost about 20 millivolt. 250 hertz. I'm still around the 3 volt range. Just increase that. We've lost, well actually, yeah, about 100 millivolts. And if I go right down to 125 hertz, yeah, okay. So we're now at 2.2, uh, so we've lost uh, 800 millivolt. 
So I'll put this at 200. Voltage came back up to 2.8. 300. Now we're back up to our almost 3 volt range. So the lower frequency end is around the 300 hertz mark. So I'll just jump straight up to 10,000 hertz, which is 10 kilohertz. And we've got total cutoff because my scope is out of range. Okay, so 10,000 hertz, we've got 2.7, 2.8 roughly, we've lost 200. So if I change that to 8,000, 2.8, Six thousand, two point nine. So it starts rolling off around the six thousand hertz mark or six kilohertz. So I'm going to go six five hundred. It's actually come up, but it's clipping. So I'm going to say it's still clipping. So I'm going to have to trim that a bit. I'm going to say that it's going to. Be cutting off roughly around the, the 6000 hertz mark, so we're going to say 300 hertz to 6 kilohertz. Right, so at our full output, I want to know what our input sensitivity now is, if I can so get over there somehow. So at full output, which is 6 volt, I want to know what the input sensitivity is. looking around or well, nearly the volt mark here so let me just increase that uh, about 900 millivolts and at that full power output those transistors were getting quite hot and they were starting to smell so but it's all good it's still outputting so I now know Roughly the input sensitivity is the 900 millivolt mark, which is roughly a voltage gain of 6.6. .6. And so here's my final conclusions without making this uh, video too long because it's already going to be a nightmare to edit at the moment. Our power output into 8 ohms is roughly 1.125 watts, so that's well within what he said. The input sensitivity is around 900 millivolts for the full output. The voltage gain is 6.6 .6 and the frequency response is around 300 hertz to 6.5 kilohertz. With those old transistors in, I could actually hear audible distortion last night, and I could on the other amplifier, so it was something common to the two. So, uh, yeah, it should sound a lot better. But I'm not going to finalise this with a sound test because, well, uh, well, why not? All right, I've powered it on and um, connected it to the speaker. I hear a slight whistle there, but I don't hear that weird oscillation I was getting before.
stop that there. It doesn't sound too bad, but there's a slight bit of distortion there still. That might be just the inherent design of the circuit. However, for amplifying uh, a small signal into a small size speaker in such a like a transistor radio or something like that is is not is not really that bad for that. So I'm quite happy. I'm now getting a watt out of it. <coughs> not that you would uh, run it at that power because those transistors will get hot and they will smoke. You could probably change those output transistors to say a BD139 on the BD140 if you wanted to really really have a good safety margin there. However, I would honestly change these 1 ohm resistors here from a quarter watt to 1 watt. If you can't get the half watts, which would be nice, put them as 1 watt because they do get quite hot. Um, well, they were, but everything was shorting as well. So, yes. Everything seems to be working great now. I'm quite happy. So I'm going to close this one out. I'm the Astro 30. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe below. And you can always become a Patreon member for as little as a dollar a month. And you can always follow me on Facebook. The links are in the description as usual. Anyway, this is the Astro 30 saying see ya. Have a great day.